Dr. Kenyon Meadows is the president and owner of Meadow Enterprises, a company that specializes in alternative investments. Dr. Meadows is also a practicing radiation oncologist. So doc, tell us how does a physician wind up getting into alternative investments and could you please tell us exactly what alternative investments are? Well, sure, Roosevelt. Number one, thanks for having me on the program. And uh, like you said, Meadows Enterprises was a company that I founded uh, a few years ago, and uh, we're into alternative investments. And, and basically, the thing that inspired me to look into alternative investments, and just to define that for you, uh, they're basically anything other than traditional stocks and bonds. And what, what sparked my interest in it was a conversation I had with a colleague of mine, who's actually more of like a mentor to me uh, in terms of influencing me to go into medicine. Uh, he was in his late 70s and getting ready to retire, and he really took a big hit in the 2008 uh, stock market crash. So much so that he had to delay his retirement um, a couple of years while he waited for the market to come back. Wow. Yeah, and you know, so that really got me thinking about you know, different ways to invest money where you can earn a steady return, but it wouldn't be subject to the sometimes, you know, pretty wild swings of, of the stock market. So that's how I got started with it. So what are the different forms of online lending that you participate in? Yes, well, you know, the, the main alternative investments we do, um, we do some traditional or, or kind of more mainstream real estate things. And then we do a lot of what we call um, alternative or specialty lending. And that ranges from peer-to-peer -peer lending. Uh, maybe some of the viewers have heard of things like Prosper and Lending Club. Uh, we do some lending to small businesses and also some uh, uh, newer things in real estate such as real estate crowdfunding and doing some, uh, some lending that way as well. So those are the main areas. So are these loans secured by anything? Well, uh, in the case of the real estate crowdfunding, yes, uh, they are secured by real property. Uh, in the case of loaning money to people, such as a, like a Prosper or a Lending Club, peer-to-peer, -peer, those are unsecured loans, so a little bit more risky, uh, but nonetheless, they are a, a good way that you can earn uh, good returns on your money, um, certainly better than in a savings account, uh, as I found. So how does this real estate crowdfunding work? Well, real estate crowdfunding, okay, uh, number one, we all, I think we all know about what we call rewards-based crowdfunding. These are things like Indiegogo, Kickstarter, things where you contribute money to a specific project. Then you get something in return, right? Like a book or the t-shirt or whatever project they're working on, right? Right, right. right. A, a reward, right? right? But up until recently, it actually wasn't legal to do a crowdfunding campaign where you had a financial return attached to it. Uh, but that is actually, uh, in the last few years, you've been able to do that. And one of the big areas, um, and that's called equity crowdfunding, by the way. And so one of the big areas is real estate. So, you know, if we were to go back a few years to like uh, the flip these house type shows that were all the rage where right, people were right, flipping right. houses, right? Well, uh, before crowdfunding, you'd have to find somebody to foot the bill, maybe like one particularly wealthy individual to write a check to do a house flip. Well, now you can take that project and go online and actually get multiple different people to contribute to, say, for instance, a house flip, and you would pay them back out of the, um, out of the sale of that. That's, that's an example, okay? That's, a, that's more of a loan type of deal. But you can actually do um, partial ownership of real estate assets with crowdfunding, too, where you can buy a real small sliver of an apartment building or a commercial building as well. With all these new ways, um, what's the advantages, so to speak, of, you know, just getting traditional rental property? Well, uh, the, 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 the barrier to entry typically has been the, the amount of money that you've needed, right? So say, for instance, um, you know, a, a modest house flip of a, of a home that might cost maybe eighty dollars to $100,000, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you'd either have to find, if you didn't have the money yourself, you either have to uh, find a money partner uh, to, to loan you the money, maybe a bank, m m more likely a private individual, but still, you'd have to come up with a chunk of money Whereas to, to participate on the investment side of it, okay? Whereas with a crowdfunding situation, 
you might be able to participate in a deal for as little as $5,000, and some of the crowdfunding sites are down to as low as $1,000. And while that's still a decent chunk of money, compared to the amounts that you typically would need to play in that space, it's a lot, lot less. So can you explain to the viewers what do you mean by the term turnkey? Okay, now this is going back to more, uh, more traditional real estate investing in terms of owning rental property, okay? The way that I do it is I, follow, I, I invest via the turnkey model. So you know, I'm a busy professional. Uh, my day job is out of a cancer physician. And so you know, I don't have the time to go out, find a good rental property, you know, do the, any required repair work that might be needed, and, and find a good tenant and do the ongoing management. But there are companies out there that essentially will do all of that for you, and they call it turnkey because essentially all you have to come to the, come to the table with is, is basically the money to purchase it, and it's sort of already uh, going for you, a tenant's in place, it's cash flowing, and they provide ongoing management. So that's the way that I uh, get involved with rental property. Wow, okay, so if you don't mind me asking, and if this is not too invasive, so to speak, how do you finance your properties? Well, you know, initially, um, I was able to finance my first one through my own savings, and once I got convinced this was a good asset class to be involved in, uh, I went around to uh, network friends, family, some colleagues, and actually raised some, uh, some money through them and essentially have um, helping, they're, they're essentially financing uh, the other properties that we bought. So yeah, using, using private money in essence. So in that model, do they own some of your property or do you just pay them back with interest? Cor correct. Uh, it's, it's the latter. Uh, yeah, they, they essentially loan money to the company and we go out and uh, acquire the properties and we pay them a, a fairly attractive interest rate on their money. Um, eight and a half percent is what we're offered currently right now. And yeah, we pay them out of the rent money that we collect from the tenants say for instance. So they don't co-own them, but they do have a, a, an investment interest in it and that they're essentially being the banker to me. How long have you actually been in this space and what has been your overall, overall experience? Well, specifically when it comes to turnkey properties, uh, we acquired our first unit in uh, June of 2014. So we're, you know, we're getting uh, about a year and a half and uh, it's been really good, uh, both in terms of the returns and just as importantly for me, the, the time commitment, it hasn't been too much to manage, you know, a few phone calls, few emails, that kind of thing, but, uh, but relatively hassle-free experience. <laughs> hassle-free? <laughs> Re relatively. <laughs> I mean, anytime you, anytime you have tenants in place, I mean, they, they are humans, you know what I mean? And uh, some things uh, go on, but I, you know, I'm not the frontline person to deal with it. The property manager is really, really key. And, and you know, in terms of getting involved with turnkey rental properties, I would say finding a very good, reliable property manager is about as important as finding a, a good property, to be honest with you. Well, I have a buddy who owns 19 rental houses, and he's the property manager, so he's telling me all these different things about all these different situations. So how, how expensive is a property manager? Because if, okay, if I go out and I spend my savings on investing in one home, one rental house, then, you know, I have to, right, I'm responsible for the upkeep, if the water heater go out, the air conditioning unit go out. <laughs> right. Well, you know, I, I think that getting involved in, in rental property, you know, you, you likely, I don't think you should do it basically kind of on a shoestring budget. I think, you know, as opposed to just scraping by and getting, you know, sort of the minimum down payment to just get the property going and everything. I think I would advise somebody to wait until they had some adequate reserves uh, as well, because you know a property manager is likely you know a typical property manager might might want like ten percent of the rent, okay, so that's going to eat into into your money, and then uh, of course you have the issues with vacancy and repairs and everything, and you really ought to budget for that and have those funds in place before jumping into the game. But a lot of people don't. Right. So what's your end game? Okay, because again, uh, I know people who invest in real estate and their end game is is usually on a 10-year loan. They go to the bank, right? I've never known anyone who has, got, has received money from a private investor. It's always been banks, okay? So they go to a bank, 
They sign a 10-year note on the loan. But their end game is, okay, once, I, once the house is paid off and I own the house, then I will start making money then. So is that kind of your same philosophy or? Well, uh, to, to talk really long term, uh, I plan on holding these properties for a very long time. They, they very well could wind up being you know, a cornerstone piece of, of my retirement, okay, in terms of you know the, the rental income funding uh, my lifestyle once I've decided to stop practicing medicine. That's how I view it now. That's, that's still quite a ways off, so things could change. Um, if the properties were to appreciate substantially in value, uh, I could see selling them off. But then, you know, you always run into that problem of, you know, what do you do uh, with the money then, you know? Um, so, uh, but, but, but certainly for now, uh, I plan on holding for a very long time. It's nice having the flexibility of having the loans with private individuals as opposed to the bank. Exactly. Um, exactly. You know, I don't, I don't have the, um, you know, the, my investors can be flexible with me and everything. Uh, certainly, as long as the uh, the uh, their payments are coming in, and so I, that's one of the reasons I went that route. Uh, even though I'm paying m a more expensive rate to them than I would be from the bank, I actually have a a, a higher level of control actually this way. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I mean, I would rather raise money privately than go through all the bells and whistles with the bank because you are uh, because you're right. You're dealing with with people and not an establishment, so they're a lot more understanding, especially when their payments are coming in, right? Right, exactly. So are there any other asset classes that you would like to mention? Uh, so yeah, we talked about the main ones. Um, another one that we, uh, that we invest in, which is kind of interesting, is a student loan refinancing, okay? Lots of us have student loans. Many and, of them. <laughs> right. And there are, a few, there are a couple of companies out there that will allow private individuals to basically refinance a credit worthy student and go ahead and, and uh, pay off their loans to the government and, and take over the payments and start paying them to investors, okay? And w why would you do that? Well, number one, we, we can refinance them at a lower interest rate than what they're getting even from the government. And number two, um, student loan debt, as you know, is, is not dischargeable, even in a bankruptcy. So that's always hanging over your head. And so it's nice to get out from underneath that and, again, uh, be paying uh, an individual as opposed to being hot to the government. Now, the returns are not uh, nearly as great as some of the other things that I invest in. But I, I look at that as, you know, making a decent return but also doing some social good, too. Uh, so that's, that's another, you know, interesting uh, asset class that we uh, we're involved in. I thank you so much for your time, Dr. Meadows, but please let people know how they can contact you and learn more. Sure. Um, my website is uh, Meadows-Enterprises, and I would particularly uh, encourage people to go to the blog that we're, we're starting over there, uh, lots of informative articles. Uh, I am working on a book um, that will be out in the next few months called Smartphone Banker. Uh, lend profitably to people, businesses, and real estate from the palm of your hand, uh, emphasizing the fact that a lot of these asset classes that I invest in, uh, they're, they're financial technology platforms, they're new, um, you can do some incredible things in terms of some of the transactions and things you can accomplish uh, from, from your phone, uh, so be on the lookout for that. And also, Roosevelt, I have some webinars, and I'll put, we'll put some links down below if people want to have a nice in-depth presentation on uh, some of these things like peer-to-peer -peer lending and the turnkey uh, rental property as well. Thank you so much for this information, and I really hope you all enjoyed this. And next time, my friends, be blessed and be encouraged.